Hello everyone, welcome back again to lesson 10. This lesson is all about sperm and egg cells and we've been talking about them a lot. We've been talking about the process by which they are produced, that would be meiosis. We've talked about how they can meet inside and outside the body, external and internal fertilization. But now we're going to dig into the structure of the sperm and the structure of the egg and how that helps them function. Um, when we talk about biology and um, things within the body, it is the structure of a particular um, organ or molecule or sperm or egg that allows it to function in that specific way. So we are going to dig into that. Uh, why does a sperm look that way and why does an egg look that way? What are their functions and everything uh, all about them? So let's jump in. First, we'll talk about the sperm. And as you'll notice, that's key point one out of three for key points in this lesson. So a sperm is made up of five parts. You can see that in the diagram below um, in your notes, but I'll also flip back and forth to try to point them out. So the first part, and we're going to be moving from left to right in your diagram, is an acrosome. The acrosome is used to break through the outer layer of the egg cell. So the acrosome is this front portion and it is essentially a little bomb on the front. So it, when it touches the egg, it explodes and allows um, the rest of the sperm to get in. It essentially makes a hole. Um, it is a very important piece and it always needs to do the breaking portion so the rest of the sperm can enter the egg. Uh, the nucleus is our second key point, and the nucleus actually is present in the sperm and the egg cell. Uh, each nucleus has 23 chromosomes. It's a haploid uh, because it was created by meiosis, and they need to come together. In the case of humans, which we're going to be discussing essentially from now on, uh, it occurs through internal fertilization inside the female's body. So the nucleus is right here. It is the large portion within the head of the sperm. We also have centrioles. So centrioles take energy from the mitochondria, which we'll dis discuss next, and move it towards the tail. So it is this area. It is like the connection. And all the waving of this tail, the flagellum, comes from here. So the mitochondria create the energy that is needed to move the tail. The centrioles take that energy from the mitochondria and move the tail, uh, which we refer to as the flagellum. So the tail uh, is the thing that moves and pushes the sperm along as it swims. And you've seen these depictions likely where the tail is moving like this and pushing the sperm along. All that energy comes from the mitochondria. It is used by the centrioles. Uh, and the, the whole purpose of having that tail, the mitochondria, the centrioles, and the flagellum is to propel the nucleus and the acrosome forward towards the egg. Uh, each piece that we discussed here has a very important function. The, uh, the mitochondria produce energy. The centrioles use that energy to move the flagellum. The flagellum is essentially the tail. Uh, the reason that the sperm needs to move is to move the nucleus or the DNA towards the egg. And once it is at the egg, the acrosome allows it to actually blast through and get to the inside of it. So each portion has a very specific function. Uh, let's move on then to the egg cell. There are less pieces to the egg cell uh, that we're going to discuss. So the first one is known as the zona pellucia. Uh, it is essentially the tough outer layer of the egg. It is the p darker pink portion that you can see in this diagram. Uh, it is what the acrosome needs to break through. It is a hard portion like the crust of the earth. Uh, the acrosome is like a bomb that breaks through that crust so that the rest of the sperm can actually enter the cell. Uh, we have the cytoplasm, and the cytoplasm is the pink stuff with the small orange dots. That is all the stuff inside uh, the egg. The reason that we have this stuff 
is because the egg needs to provide some nutrients to allow for cell division afterwards. Uh, the sperm essentially brings nothing along with it other than the DNA. So the egg needs to be prepared to uh, keep the uh, zygote alive um, through cell division and using that cytoplasm for energy. We then also have the nucleus, uh, which holds the DNA for the female. Uh, it is haploid, it contains 23 chromosomes because it was created through the process of meiosis. That is key. It is generally somewhere in the center and the whole idea is that the sperm would maybe come this way, it would um, hit the side, the acrosome would blow up the uh, crust, the outer layer, the zona pellucia, which would allow the uh, nucleus to be propelled in towards the female's nucleus. They will then combine and you will have a zygote. Um, so uh, that is the process. It is every single piece of, that we've talked about has a particular function and a reason why it's there. Um, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to connect the structure of the egg to the function of the egg and the structure of the sperm to the function of the sperm. Essentially what we've been talking about here, but put in your own words. As you can see from your notes, it is just terms and diagrams. I want you to take some time to actually think about and explain why a sperm cell is structured in this way, why an egg cell is structured in this way. I want you to use the terms, but I want you to write it in your own words. It should be a paragraph for each. Uh, I want you to think about the size, the shape, the features that are on the sperm and the egg that make it unique, that make it able to perform its job. Uh, how does their size, shape, features make their purpose possible? Uh, an egg doesn't really need to move, but a sperm does. How, how, how do their functions allow them to do that? Um, an egg needs to provide nutrients while a sperm doesn't. How do their structures allow them to do that? That's what I want you to be thinking about as you do um, this assignment. Thanks very much for listening, everyone. If you have any questions, please let me know, uh, but I'll see you soon.